Yo, what up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make cool future bass or melodic dubstep style music like someone like Elenium in Ableton Live 9. This is a great beginner tutorial to get your first steps into that sound. So without further ado, let's get going. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to start out with in this video is we're going to make the beat. Now, the beat is actually quite simple, and it, a lot of it is about picking the right samples, something soft, something with some cool room noise. Now, we're going to go deeper into this in future tutorials, but right now, I'm just going to talk about the actual sl sample selection process. And You want something soft, and I actually have them in my signature folder where I've kind of found sounds from other packs or ones I've made or my roommates have made that I really like. So let's find one and kind of talk about what makes it work for Future Bass. So already, if you're going for a very specific style, the bigger Elenium kind of big epic style, uh, this sort of echoey, Tycho room sounding kick is kind of what you want. Something with a soft transient, a nice room sound to it, and it sounds very organic and realistic. And in fact, for this tutorial, I'm even just going to use that one there. Now next up, we're gonna want a similar sounding snare. Something organic, something with a bit of weight, and some cool room sound to it. So let's just go through this. Actually, I made this one in a past song. I liked it. And we're going to, I export it out of the song. We're gonna turn it up. And I don't like the tail of it. I just kind of like that low mid body. It's got some nice lows to it. And then let's find a more organic one to fill in the rest. Kind of like the idea of doing this almost pitched down. Um, and you'll see I'm actually working in audio, and this is a tutorial I actually just covered the other day, where I like doing things in audio because you can kind of manually fade, do some easy pitching, and just do some more unique things. Watch the video if you didn't already see it. So I'll turn that down. And I kind of want to do an overly compressed layer of this snare. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it because I want to bring out that room sound. So we're going to crush the shit out of it. And I don't really like the high end of it. Let's bring out more of the lows. Maybe a bit of verb. And if we slow down the release and the attack, it's less distorted, freeze it, flatten it, and then cut it to taste. Now, I know this sounds way over the top, but if we kind of tuck it in lightly, it gives this huge explosive sound. even shorten it. Perfect. And for the tempo, let's just do something like 80 BPM. Now there's obviously so many different types of feature bass now that's becoming popular. The kind of swung out groovy one that used to be popular is kind of not what we're going for here. This is sort of more that big Elenium epic sound. Thus far, at least. So moving this along. Uh, 
awesome. I'm liking that. Duplicate that across. Um, oh, the white noise fade. There we go. Now, what's really important next is to write the chord progression, because you can't make that big epic sound without a chord progression. So I'm actually going to go grab one real quick. Perfect. So I wrote something here. We have our grand piano playing the chords below. Awesome. And then I actually wrote a bass line to accompany it out of the chords. And if we can open up here, you actually see I've deactivated the notes in the chords that I'm not using. And I created some sort of bass line and I created a sub line that fit really well in that sub range. It's going to be great for live performance. And if I switch this to a sub, you'll sort of hear that. Cool, it works. Nothing super interesting, but I mean, we're hearing, hurrying here for a tutorial, so it'll do for now. So what's really important now is getting the pulse, that movement, that breath, that life. Uh, so what we're gonna do is first, we're just going to apply serum instead of the grand piano. <laughs> Before we get into the sound design, we're going to group this thing and we're going to side chain compress it. But what I want to do is I want to side chain compress it to a dummy track, which I'm going to put below my voice. And a dummy track is a track that is off and we can use it to trigger the side chain with, a, with the same signal every time. Typically people like to use like a short hi-hat. Um, I'm going to test out the kick and if we have to switch it out, we have to switch it out. So I'm going to put it over where the kick and the snare would be because now it's going to be the same input for that side chain and it's going to have the same pulse every time. And now we can drag that compressor down onto our group here, or I already had one. And we're going to side chain that to track uh, two. we can start designing this thing. So first I'm going to start with our initial serum patch here. And we're going to do a really simple super saw. Not bad. I'm going to try another saw below it, test it out, might not sound too good. And you see, I'm using the default serum saws just with some unison. This is as basic as it gets. And this is our basic serum future base Ableton tutorial. So we can keep it that basic. Now, if you don't want it that basic and you want it to be a little more unique and you want it to be your own, what I recommend doing is grouping it and creating a new track below it so we can test out. And in this track, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use different wavetables. Now I'm going to go to my own custom wavetables, some chill ones I've made. Let's test these out. I mean, I'm not not happy with it. It's pretty good. Things are getting a little loud now. I'm just going to quickly turn things down a few dB to compensate. I mean, for a two second patch, I, I mean, it's not too bad. I kind of like it. So I'm going to add a little bit of reverb. I'm just going to use convolution reverb 
from Max for Live. You can use any reverb. Doesn't really matter. You can use the reverb in Serum. I just like to add a little bit of reverb. <laughs> Then let's add some sort of baseline. So I know this is now an octave too loud. And honestly, we can do something pretty simple. I'm even thinking just a triangle. Now, one thing I like to do that can get a little aggressive, and I wouldn't do if you're too comfortable. It's actually like to distort all these together, um, but it can get a little over the top. Dial back the dry wet, and adds a little bit of grit in there, and I personally kind of like that. Also going to tidy up the low end of the chord since we want the sub to come through nice and clean on our big epic sound system. Cool, not sounding too bad. Let's add a couple other things here. I'm actually going to add a lead into the same channel here, built out of our chords. And then I'm going to add perhaps some fills. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our chords, we're going to consolidate them, legato so they aren't overlapping all ugly like that. And I'm going to grab Serum. And what I want to do is I'm going to fold these so we're only seeing the notes in our chords. I'm going to select them all with Command A. And I'm going to write some sort of line using the notes in the chords. This is great if you're like me, not too good with theory, and you don't want to get too creative and mess things up. Just use the notes in the chords. It's not as harmonically interesting, but it works. So let's test things out. I'm not really doing anything interesting. This is a really boring basic line. But it kind of just, it works. Now we were just using a saw too. We can go in if we want, 
We could start to add some glide for a bit of movement. It's basic, but you guys get the idea. You can start to make these lead lines out of the actual chords. Make it really pulsy. Not the best, but you guys get the idea. I'm just doing this on the fly. So now maybe what we can do to finish things off is we can add some fills, maybe some drum fills, maybe some vocal fills. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take our chords and I'm gonna use them to create some fills here for our basics. <laughs> So I'm going to arpeggiate the chord progression. Actually, even instead of the vocal chop, I think this works if we find the right patch. I'll just go through one of my own. You can do this with any pluck though. It's just a basic example. You want to fill those gaps with something interesting, a cool melody, vocal chop, tom fill. So that's one possibility there. We could even take this out and just do some sort of chord fill, um, just the same chord. Maybe something like this. It's all about experimentation, that's what's so cool about future basses, you can kind of just do whatever. There's really no right or wrong answer to it, which I think is pretty fun.
something like that. Just experimenting. I think that's an interesting little fill there. And maybe we'll finish things off with some sort of tom fill in there. Just something super basic. I'm not really thinking too much about it. So there we go, guys. That was pretty basic. I just want to give you guys a basic idea of how you can do that epic future bass sound, uh, kind of like Elenium and some other guys like that, Minnesota. Um, yeah, to recap, it's getting these like big Tycho organic echoey style kicks, big gated reverb beat snares with nice tails on them, then write a nice chord progression, put a very simple super saw sound if your sound design isn't that good. You saw it was super basic. And then fill in the gaps and maybe have some sort of top melody or other layers in there, vocal chops to enhance that pulsing giant super saw. I'm going to be going into more detail and later tutorials on how to make those types of drums, how to make those types of patches. But for now, I just want to give you guys the basic arrangement and basic idea. Now, again, if you want to dissect this a little further, get the patch, look at it a bit more, head down to the description of this video where you can actually grab this. And if you like this video, just drop a comment, leave a like and share it because I really want to do these types of videos more often. So thanks again, guys. This was the basics of making epic future bass in Ableton. My name's Kermode. Thanks again. Peace.